What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we dive into some quality of life fixes that they could do in MTG Arena. As we know, the economy is a big problem in Arena, but there's some minor things that you could maybe make some adjustments to that I think will overall help the player experience when it comes to playing MTG Arena. If you like the video, hit that like button. It definitely helps out a lot. If you're new here, you want to know when I post new videos on the channel, hit that subscribe button. It puts a plus one, plus one counter on the channel. With that being said, let's just dive into the things we can fix about MTG Arena. So first and foremost, the one thing I think that right off the bat when you open up MTG Arena and you're on the front screen, is the thing we probably want to fix here is one thing that I don't think a lot of people realize, especially if you're a newer player and may not own a lot of cards, and that is actually the vault. Um, this is a thing that is progress in the background. Uh, if you're not over 100%, you won't see the vault chest open up. As you can kind of see here, my vault, overall vault progress is at 90, uh, 194.8. But if I were to click this chest and actually redeem that vault reward for the first 100%, this chest would go away until I get the other 6% for the vault. I think this is just a very easy, very simple tweak that they could do for the, uh, the just, just helping players understand other ways to get wild cards that they may not even realize. So the next thing we're gonna dive into is we're gonna go into the deck tab and we're gonna kinda look at our decks. Now there's kind of a few tweaks that I do think that would be beneficial to players. And I think these tweaks aren't anything too drastic. And, you know, if we could say, you know, these are possible ways that they could monetize the game in that sense. And the first one would be that they could actually monetize is actually more deck slots. Now, I don't think this is going to affect everybody as, you know, some players may not create a bunch of decks. But I do think if there's a way that we could increase even by 25 uh, slots, I think having, you know, a, an ability to acquire a, additional slots of decks, that'd be definitely beneficial. There have been many a times that, you know, thankfully recently, but when I came back to the game, I actually cleaned a lot of this up. But if we want to, you know, have some additional decks that we, you know, we just want to have a little bit of everything. And I, like I said, it's not a problem for everybody, but I do think having additional an ability to or a way to get additional deck slots will would be a benefit to players who made like a lot of decks the next thing actually would be is a way to kind of clean up your deck list let's just say you have a bunch of decks you don't play anymore or you want to move on from let's just say you tested one or tested a bunch and you're like ah, i don't really like that now the one problem i think that would have especially when you start having a bunch of decks that you just want to get rid of is that there's no real good way to actually delete decks out of here um i think a thing that could be beneficial is Instead of, you know, having to click on a deck and then clicking the delete button, if you click the delete button and you ha you were able to highlight or select a bunch of decks and then confirm that these are the decks you want to complete and just mass delete a bunch of decks all at once. Very minor tweak. I think it would benefit a bunch of players in the sense that, like I said, you create a bunch of decks. You don't, you know, sometimes I don't go back and delete decks that I, you know, I've not touched in a while or you know maybe they've rotated out or I, i'm just not interested in playing them anymore just having a quick way to delete them i think is beneficial now the next thing here is actually going to be talking about the mastery pass i think this is something that's actually kind of like there's a couple of different ways that you know you, you could make some minor tweaks when it comes to the mastery pass and first and foremost um outside of like pre-ordering the next mastery pass um you know it'd be definitely quite beneficial other than what i'm blocking hold on one second let me move to the other side uh other than purchasing the mastery pass from directly right here there really is no other way to know that you could buy a mastery pass for the game other than clicking the tab and clicking the 3400 if there was a way that if you were to go to say the store you click over here and maybe we haven't acquired the mastery pass if there was somewhere on this front page you know hey spend 3400 uh, gems you know you can unlock the mastery pass um you know just one of those things i know it's not anything major yet again some some of these are minor tweaks some of these are major tweaks this is one of those minor tweaks just having a better way to like know that you can buy a mastery pass outside of just pre-ordering it on the store page would be definitely beneficial um you know yet again uh talking about another thing when it comes to the mastery pass i think this is one of those things like you know currently i'm only level two on my mastery pass just because i you know took the whole month off of february for the most part from playing magic and i haven't really played a bunch of games just yet you know i've dabbled here and there to when i've done my deck videos but i haven't played a massive amount of games to kind of gain up levels now i'll be quite honest um you know there there are quite a few levels to the mastery pass uh currently you know there we go up nine pages we go all the way up to level 80 that is the maximum. But the one thing I will say that is kind of, or actually it's level 90. Sorry, I apologize. The one thing that is kind of frustrating as a player who's now getting into Magic again after taking a break is that there's not going to be a really good way other than me purchasing the levels I'm lacking to catch up to where maybe players are currently in the Mastery Pass. Like I can't go about me as a player and just play Magic to get further in the Mastery Pass. I can only play so much. I hit a cap for the day. 
and then I have to play the next day, hit the cap again. And that's the only way currently if I don't want to spend money to actually get, you know, closer to the possibility of completing the Master Pass before the season is over. And I think that, yet again, is another feature that if, you know, you, it, you know, either you allow me to every win that I get during the day after the 15 for the daily, just gives me mastery, you know, experience, that'd be beneficial, maybe increase the overall mastery experience you get from quests and things like that. I'm going to assume because, you know, we know how they are with certain things in the economy, they probably don't want to just start giving away things to players. But I do think, you know, if you're somebody who likes to complete the Mastery Pass and you take some time off, you know, you definitely feel behind the bar when it comes to actually trying to catch up to the players who are also completing the Mastery Pass. So I think allowing players to have another avenue to kind of grind out a Mastery Pass, just like you would grind out, you know, your 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 uh, Mythic ranking and stuff like that in the game, I think is beneficial. Another way I think you could probably even do it is you know, incentivize players to play events in the game, um, you know, make the standard event, make drafts, make all that stuff, you know, completing those and getting to certain, rank, you know, amount of wins will give you mastery uh, XP. I think that's also very simple. You know, every win you get in a particular event gives you a little bit more, a little bit more mastery XP on top of the additional rewards. I don't think giving people ways, other ways to earn mastery XP is really going to break the economy overall. You know, for the most part, you know, if, you, if you're a free-to-play player, there's not really too much other than packs on the top row. You know, the bottom one, you know, you've already spent the money. I mean, I don't understand why they can't just allow you to kind of get through these ranks a lot quicker. Um, you know, I probably won't buy the Master Pass at this point in the season, even though I have the currency, just because I know I probably won't get anywhere close to the maximum rank, which means I won't get any of the cosmetics that come with this particular Master Pass. And sure, I don't get the Koi Fish, but no big deal. You know, I can I can worry about that later and I'll get my, you know, Kamigawa cards other ways. Now, the next thing is actually kind of one of those things that I do think that they probably need to tweak now that we have another format added into, um, you know, into the game. And that is actually how you know, packs are organized. Right now we have a bunch of ways to, you know, buy packs. Uh, you know, if you want to know what standard is, all the white ones are standard. You know, having a way to maybe point that out to players is one thing. I know it's not the biggest of deals, but just, just point out to players what's standard legal if you just had the word standard, like above here, and then like historic or something, or maybe like a little help thing that lets you know, like these sets are standard legal, these sets are not standard legal. I know when you buy the packs, like if you were to buy a historic pack, it says this cannot be played in the current standard format. Um, I maybe just having a little thing that says this is standard legal. It would be a good way to point out to players. The next thing I think would be is we need to clean up the store a little bit. Now that we have alchemy here, we have alchemy packs and alchemy bundles. They're all the way in the front. This to me seems like they're pushing alchemy onto players who may not know otherwise, because you know you would just be like, okay, I'm gonna buy the one that's in the front that's a thousand gold, and there's this other one. Okay, it's just different card art, no big deal. But in reality, a player may not realize that that little gold symbol on there and the A's flowing around it mean it's alchemy. Uh, other than it's saying, you know, other than it's saying new offers every day. I, I I don't know what that means. It says new offers every day. I think a way to just filter out alchemy if you don't want to play alchemy um, would be another benefit. You know, make a tab up here, uh, you know, make it say alchemy or something. I just think, you know, add in more player, you know, add in more packs to players. And then on top of it, you know, we're going to get the mythic only pack and i don't know if they're gonna do it for both alchemy and you know regular standard packs and i think adding that on top of all this will just make this whole pack page just over cumbersome and make it very confusing for our player to understand okay what pack do i need there's so many different choices here i'm overwhelmed you know the one thing i know from what i do for a living is that when you give players when you give a person too many choices they typically will not make a decision and just kind of like go away I think if you kind of clean this up a little bit, kind of, you know, make it a little bit easier to digest when it comes to, you know, figuring out what you want to purchase, we'll overall make it better for, you know, the customer who shop in your, you know, your store. So the other thing I would say, the, uh, what could be beneficial, and I think, you know, I don't know why they do it this way, but, you know, if I'm a free to play player and I, I spend gold to buy my packs when it comes to buying packs, I don't understand why I have to sit here and click, you know, these individually and buy one pack at a time. Uh, just a way to maybe buy multiple packs, you know, you, you click this and then like you drag a slider. I don't think there's a way, you know, to say like, hey, I want, you know, three more packs. You know, I want to buy four packs. I'm, I don't have 4,000 gold, but maybe I just want to buy two packs. There's no way other than clicking purchase 4,000 gold. There's no way to get multiples at a time. And I think making that a little bit easier on the, you know, your person who's buying the packs from the store is definitely something that would benefit 
you know, players from coming out and buying things in the store overall. Now, the next thing we're going to do is not anything too major when it comes to the actual overall client, uh, but this is your, you know, your profile page. Um, as you can kind of see here below your avatar, you have, you can customize your emotes. You can go about customize your pets. If you have multiple pets, as it's loaded my pets for some reason, you can go through and customize your pets and see which ones you don't have unlocked. You can also customize your avatar from a choice of avatars, uh, which is definitely pretty cool. The one thing I think would be pretty beneficial to a player who may not realize it is the ability to also customize your sleeves if you have sleeves for your decks and also customize your lands here. I think adding everything to your profile and having like, you know, all your customization in one spot is beneficial. Yes, I know when you're building your decks or going through your decks, you can go into the deck, click the, the, the name of the deck and or click the little box deck box for your deck. Click that. You can then select your you can select your sleeves for that deck if you want to change the sleeves up. Then when you create the deck itself, you know, you can you can swap out the swamps that it's, you know, let's just say swamps that it's giving you land wise and put them put it in the style of swamp you want. But I think a way just to kind of have all of your customization in one spot is definitely beneficial. It's just, uh, yet again, just a minor tweak, nothing too major. This is, you know, yet again, not a problem for everybody. Some players could care less what lands they have. If their deck has any sleeves, since these cards are digital, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to bend a card. You're not going to scratch a card or anything like that. But Yet again, just, you know, put some customization all in the same area so players know where to go when it comes to certain things. And maybe even, you know, point it out, you know, this is where you would customize maybe your stuff in the game overall. Um, but yet again, still keep the other avenues if that's what you wanted to do. Now, the next thing is what they actually did do is they actually cleaned up a lot of, you know, this tab. Uh, before when you hit the play, you had this whole list of things you could do all in one. Um, I think the one thing that would be beneficial here um, and it'd be a way to kind of help players identify things, um, you know, th things maybe they could afford is a possibility of what events can I play? Like, what do I have the currency of? Um, you know, whenever you build a deck and you don't have cards for that deck, it tells you, you know, you're missing these cards for that deck. Um, and if you don't have the currency, you know, you can't play the deck, of course, or, or craft the cards you're missing. But, you know, graying out events or things like that to let you know, hey, I don't have, you know, the currency to afford to play you know, uh, I don't know, a draft or, you know, the metagame challenge or whatever the event is and helping players that's kind of identify what events exist here. You know, I'm an experienced player. I don't know why the color challenge is up at the top, even though I completed it. I feel like, you know, getting rid of that out of a player who's played the game for X amount of time or thrown at the bottom as being a way to kind of like, you know, get, get it out of there. Cause to be quite honest, there's, there's no rhyme or reason. None of these None of these events are in actually any particular order. Um, it just says all. Like there's like I don't, I have no idea how they filtered this, but from the from from what it looks like, it just looks like they're just thrown together, just in a way that you know you got these 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 uh these things that are more of like these specialty events here at the top. Then you go into your drafts, then you go into your alchemy events, then you go into your historic events, and then for some reason I don't know why, but standards thrown all the way at the bottom. No idea. But then you got at the bottom, you got your standard events. I just think like a way to understand, like, cause these, you know, you have to buy into play most of these events. I think other than maybe sometimes the weekly challenge, which is I think on Wednesdays and Thursdays or something like that, it goes from Wednesday to Thursday. Um, but just, you know, identifying things you can play or participate in with, you know, maybe the currency you currently have available is definitely one of those things that can definitely help out a player. Um, if they're, you know, also showing how much the events cost is another thing. I mean, if you hover over it, maybe a tooltip pops up or maybe in the bottom right hand corner, you know, you, you have like, you know, gold and the gems that it costs. Um, I think that could also be beneficial just so you can kind of like look at it and maybe you want to max min max, like how much you want to spend on events. Like, you know, you have, I have 3,530 gems. Okay. You know, a premier draft is 1500. Okay. I can do two of them, but I have to click into it now to actually see, you know, how much it is. I think, you know, being able to look at the events and being able to understand okay, these are how much each event costs, I think is definitely another benefit, beneficial way. Now, I know this is kind of one of those things that's kind of like kind of interesting, but I know it's something that, you know, you don't definitely need in MTG Arena just because you can always take a deck and you can play it against Sparky. But the idea to maybe get an idea of what a preview hand would be for a deck, um, you know, if you ever go to any of the websites that people upload their decks to, or maybe you import into your MTG Arena decks people will play, um, just a way to kind of preview uh, a, sample, a sample hand uh, let's just, you know, you can, you know, click it a bunch of times, kind of see different, you know, odds of drawing particular hands. Um, if it seems like you're not drawing a lot of lands, you then maybe need to know that you need to increase the land count a little bit. 
you know, th something simple like that is definitely very good. Um, you know, they're, they're talking about ways to kind of like play test a deck, but I don't know if it's just easier to capture a sample hand for a particular deck before you even craft it. And if you think that like, you know, you're not drawing the right cards in your open in hand, or your deck doesn't have a very curve, you're drawing all the expensive things, maybe you need to cheapen the cards. That's a way to kind of like, even before you commit currency, um, it's, it'd be a simple way that even though you can't play test it, you can at least see how the deck would open up or the possibilities of how the deck would open up is is definitely beneficial. Another thing is, is I, I, do, I do think this is kind of like the, the change of how, you know, some of the cards have been crafted. But as you kind of see here, this is the overall breakdown of this particular deck. Um, it's kind of weird that, you know, for some reason this deck went straight to uh, traditional traditional standard, but it's a standard deck, you know, because I don't have a sideboard. It's a best of one style deck. Um, you know, sometimes it's kind of one of those tricky things. Like if I were to cancel out and it was still a traditional standard deck, it'd probably be like, hey, you only have seven cards out of the 15 card sideboard. Do you want to add more cards or whatever before you leave? Uh, which I don't think is a big deal. I think it's definitely something to point out to a player who may not realize. Maybe they or maybe they built the deck real quick. And for, oh crap, I forgot a sideboard. And thankfully there's a reminder. But anyway, the, the one detail I think that is definitely beneficial. And this doesn't really take account for and may not be a big deal just because like Zendikar is rotating out. But, um, you know, the land count doesn't reflect cards that are also count as lands like the modal cards in, in this don't count as land so if i go over here it makes it a little easier just because i'd be blocking most of it um if i were to look at you know do i have one of the modal lands i thought i did okay malakir rebirth or malakir meyer so the modal land side doesn't actually count towards my land count so unless you know that you have some of these in the deck you're not gonna you're gonna you're gonna kind of forget about it and be like oh wow i only have 20 lands is that good um and i think that's something that you need to kind of like i think the client needs to kind of like update um, you know, let's just say uh, you play an enchantment deck um, and you have enchantment creatures. Um, I don't think the the thing counts like the enchantments and the creatures together. Um, but, you know, it's possible that they do because I'm now looking at it as a citizen class and human. So it is possible that the enchantments that we do get, um, like the strangling grasp, I guess, is maybe counted. But just things to clean up this overall definitely be beneficial. Um you know, that's definitely one of those things uh, that would definitely help out players who would would come to craft in a deck. I do like that this is up here that you can see your overall curve as there's ones, twos, and then this is your threes and fours. Uh, that's definitely very good. But yet again, like I said, um, if we were to, even if you were to click this and like, let's just say there was a button to see sample hand, that'd be, that'd be like a cool little, just a little tiny feature you could add to the deck building. Um, so just so you kind of understand, you know, and do I have this right balance in this column? Other than looking at this and being like, okay, I have 21 creatures, 19 non-creatures. I don't really have a lot of one drops that are non-creatures. I have a bunch of two drops that are non-creatures, three drops, no non-creatures, and four, all my four drops are non-creatures. So, I mean, that's cool. You can see a breakdown. Do I need to add more two drops to make it a little bit more balanced? I don't really know. But yet again, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, nothing too crazy. The other thing too, I, I don't know why um, the deck, the game does this, but you know, this is a mono black deck and I understand because of my sideboard that I have, you know, things like Inkling Summon and Pest Summon in, it for some reason, you know, says I need to, you know, have white and green selected, but clearly the main deck doesn't have any of it. Um, and I think that's one of those things I can, you know, tweak with the game is just, you know, it, go look at look at the main deck don't actually count the sideboard especially these splash lands um because i i do think that you know confuses people um sure there's there's cards here at the top that you'd be like well they look white but they have the thing is their other side or they have black mana in their actual ability and that's why they're selected for um for you know black if i only have black selected but yet again it's just one of those simple fixes that i don't know why you know when you go back out and you look at the deck it's like Oh, I built a Mardu deck. No, no, I didn't. I didn't build a Mardu deck. Oh, Mardu? No, Mardu's red. Golgari? No. I I didn't build. I didn't build a white, black, and green deck. Um, I really just built a mono black deck. And I think that's you know yet again, it's kind of weird. You know, look at here. I have mono white, but it has white, black, and red mana. That's a Mardu deck. Um, so it's kind of weird that even though I didn't include those colors in the main deck, it's still saying that this is 
a three color deck when in reality is not. I mean, other than that, those are just some, you know, some minor things that I, you know, pointed out with just some various things in the game that I think they could overall improve, which wouldn't really require anything too much on the back end to really, you know, recreate almost. Uh, but let me know if there's things that annoy you about the game that maybe I didn't go over down in the comments below. If you like the video, hit that like button. It definitely helps out a lot. If you do here, you want to know when I post new videos on the channel, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.